first uh, praise and glory and honor to our Father in heaven and uh, bestow our my much appreciation to his son, Yeshua. Um, let's pray. Lord, we uh, want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything. Help us to have gratitude for all. Help us to understand trials are your way of loving us and drawing us close to you, even though we don't want to see it that way sometimes. Lord, help us to deal with spiritual compromise, the little things. Some of us are dealing with big things. Some of us are dealing with little things. It's all equal. It's all sin. The wages of sin is death. And Lord, we do not want to operate in darkness any, any further. Lord, help us to see and focus and walk the walk every day towards you. Help us to generate, Lord, the righteous path being directed by the Holy Spirit that no matter what, you're going to guide us. You're going to straighten us out. Help us to make sound decisions based on the Ten Commandments, the law. Help us to honor our parents. Help us to not cause our children to anger. Help us not to steal, not to kill, not to bear false witness. Lord, help us to not say your name. Lord, help us to not covet thy neighbor's things. Look at them as better or more. Help us to not covet thy neighbor's wife. Lord God, Help us not to have false idols, which nobody here can say they don't. Help us to deal with the pride, the lack of integrity, the morality issues. Carve out of us anything that is just ungodly, unholy, that just spiritually is compromised. Carve out of us the, the lack of desire to be one with others. Or take out of us this need for attention, this need for approval, this need for endorphins. Lord, help us to seek you as we do approval on the internet. Help us to seek your approval and esteem your commandments higher than our IG profile or how we look to people we don't even know. Help the truth come out in each one of us so hardcore. And we need to look in the mirror and say, who are you? I like you. Who is this new person that is not willing to compromise on anything? Who is this new person that doesn't buy something so they can return it later after using it? Or where something broke and it's outside of the terms, and we return it, Lord. We all fall short for the glory of God. We all have morality issues, whether small, whether great. And they need to be plucked and pulled. Everything is a determination. Everything is... Are we shining for you, or are we burning some of the cross? Are we shedding some of the blood that was spared for us on the cross? 
because we find the blood not worthy or we don't esteem the finished work of your son. There are people here that have gone through hard, hard lives that are ashamed of who they are, who they were. I'm ashamed of who I was as a young man. Everything can change, Lord. You can renew us today. And today, walking in your statutes, walking in your law, and saying no to sin is just one more day. There comes a moment where you release your sin to God, where you release your habits to God. And we're our Father in prayer and in knowing our hearts, Lord, we know that you know our hearts. We want to grasp and want to take from us those things in which we think we can't let go of. You can do anything you want. You can give, you can take, you can award, you can bless, you can withhold. You, you are the king of the universe. Man is trying to duplicate and create and manipulate and clone and try to be like God who got it right the first time. Lord, I am sure you are in much disdain for this nation in particular. Help us to come out so we do not walk with the disdain. Help us to come out so that we are free children under God. And that we can utilize every penny for the glory of kingdom work while we are here. Lord, I just ask that you bless the people that are coming on, the people that are hearing this for the first time in the future, the people that have needs, true spiritual needs, anxiety, fears, simple solutions, Lord. Simple solutions. Trust. In the Lord God, with all your heart, all your soul, all of your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Two very simple commandments. How could you not love a perfect father? That's easy. Neighbor, that's hard, Lord. But help us to honor you with what you said. That all the commandments fall on that. Help us just to think through the important nature of dealing with the innermost sin that we hold. The innermost anger that we hold. The innermost unforgiveness that we hold. Help us today, today, to deal with that. Help us, Lord, to be refreshed. Empty. As we let it go, vessels of honor, usable now, pliable now, moldable now, because we're not hanging on to just junk. Help us to find worthy our time with you today. Help us not to take advantage of it and talk to others while we're in the middle of praying. Help us to take serious this time that we have once a week. That we all are praying and agreeing. That we all are seriously considering who we are. That we are seriously considering our prayer life. Or we're, we're considering the sin that we step through every single day. The choices that we make. 
Help us to think through, Lord, before we do these stupid things. Just want to thank you, Lord, for investing in everybody that's on this prayer call, everybody that's listening. Lord, help them to receive your investment, your time. Help them to understand you are on their calendar. That you are available to them. That where they seem like you're not, where they have disbelief in a God and a creator. Sometimes the simplicity of life explains the creation and it's so easily able to overlook it. And it's man's pride that gets in the way. They cannot see the creation. As if we went from the goo to the zoo to you. A stupid pride. Help us not to be manipulated by what's going on in the world right now. Not to find less powerful who you are. Not to realize the white hats are out there. The strong men of valor are out there. And Lord, that you're in total control. And yes, free will is taking place. And yes, there are innocent injuries. But that's the design of free will. Because without total free will, we don't have total acceptance of the Son of God. We can't. Unless God has authorized this world to have free will. That's why we have prayer times. This is why we are praying for our families, praying for covering, praying for our friends. So help us to get through this week, Lord. We're going to lay down our prayers to you today, Father. We thank you for all that we are going through and all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, right, guys, listen, if you... Uh, have any prayer requests, do so right now. Just post them in the comment section or put them under the QA. I appreciate you guys coming on today. Um I really want to get into um elements of what I think is is something we all should be considering for for our lives, like what is holding us back. And um and knowing you guys and knowing myself and knowing that I do have areas in my life where I feel like um, I've been held back. All you have to do is look in the mirror. All you have to do is assess and you're going to realize what you're doing and why you're being held back. And when we're talking about holding back, we're talking about See, this nation here and the United States of America is the only nation really that has been able to utilize um, what I would call a fractional reserve banking practices to create the world's reserve currency platform that every country has to be hinged on the dollar. And of course, because the men, the power brokers, the structures that are behind the monetary systems are going to want to make sure that they are at the best point, financially speaking, hard assets speaking. And so they're going to make the dollar prosper for a period of time. And so when you're in this nation, it's very easy to see the elements of having the element of not lacking the element of getting free services from your government which most every nation does not have the element of people want to be here people want to be an american it's like it's the true white privilege card that people talk about out there. It's true being American is kind of like that privilege card. Now it's flipped. 
the dollar is about to fail. It already has. There's a few things holding certain elements in place and we're walking into a major, major economic collapse like nobody has ever seen on this earth. And services from your government are going to be warranted or lacking. Your ability to see your sin in front of you will be much easier because you've had a covering of a of a grace card, if you will, on your life. It's been easy to make money. It's been easy to, to have. So you're not that family on the African desert floor with a budget of $110 a year for your food. You've had your whole life while we've raped and robbed and pillaged every other nation in the name of freedom and democracy to steal their wealth and their assets, not for your personal gain, but in the name of freedom and democracy with the military force and might of the most powerful military in the world to install our central banks, to install our ways to kill their people in the millions. This is what we've been doing. This is a reality. And now they want to reduce the world's population under the basis of a lie, under the pretense of global warming, a lie. There's many, many, many different thought processes on what's going on in the world. And the whole purpose of this is to create a world treaty, a carbon based treaty what is carbon you where you move it costs you consume it costs meat is no longer on your plate land is no longer something you can own every element of life as you know it could quite possibly change if you are not honoring the word of God, not being surety for anything, United States citizen. Frankly, anybody with a job is surety for the corporation that they are under. I'm not speaking the one they work for. I'm speaking those social security numbers worldwide. The IRS is under the IMF is the largest collection arm for the world order. It's not under the United States. It's under the IMF. IRS collects for every single corporation, meaning Re Australia Republic, United States Corporation, Ireland Republic Corporation. These corporations are all listed under the Securities and Exchange Commission in District of Columbia. A cordoned off area that was designed for the purposes of seating a government to uphold our God-given unalienable rights has turned into the military-industrial complex, housing the strongest force in the world, the Pentagon and everything else under the sun to rake down havoc on the world, to bring every country corporation under their jurisdiction, the true whore Babylon, with its tentacles in every country. And we have reaped the luxuries of having the dollar as being the world's reserve currency. We've reaped the ability to have more than any other nation. The element of being able to make a dollar in this nation is about to change. My point is, it's been very hard to see the speck in your own eye because the pictures always look a little better over here than it is over in another nation. So you're not focused on your sin when you're going through good times. 
I'm going to ask you guys a question. When was the last time you looked at a beautiful woman that was married and rebuked your thoughts and asked God for support? So you don't break the commandment. Because adultery is not a matter of a physical act. It's a matter of lusting after another man's wife. When was the last time you rebuked that thought? Do you have sex with women in your mind that are married or unmarried? When was the last time that you dealt with the little things in your life? Or the big things. But then let's talk about the little things. Compromise, pride. Pride. Be anything. Unforgiveness. Guilty. Guilty. Anger. Quick to anger. Think about it. Think about how often, as a believer that you say you are, that you've held somebody else to this. They've wronged you routine. You want to change the world? Look at the man in the mirror. It's a good song, by the way. You want to change the world. Start with the woman, the man in the mirror. You can do amazing things in this world by shedding and leaving behind the junk that you're carrying. Do you know what anxiety is caused from? You might have anger towards your spouse that you don't know. You might be holding on unforgiveness of something somebody did against you. You just might be full of things. Maybe your husband doesn't speak to you in the love language that you need and you are upset about that. Maybe you've been listening to the wrong card of the way somebody should speak to you. Maybe they're just an a-hole and you can't stand them and you've developed this bitterness and it develops this animosity and then they start texting people and you start texting people. Who knows where you're at? Who knows how far down the rabbit hole you've truly gone? How astray you've gone? You cannot walk in dishonor. An oath is an oath, especially one made before God. You can't dishonor that oath. I used to deal with little dishonors in life. And you have to check it like immediately. Even with your friends, even with your spouses. I used to know of a pastor who dealt with a, a spouse that was a klepto. Personal, that's between her and God. This was the most godly man I knew. I'm thinking to myself, what? Where, what, how? What's the reason? The amount of money, these salaries that are being paid to these pastors is ridiculous. There's no reason. So what's the purpose of the compromise? It's endorphins. It's recognition. I can get away with something. I need extra. I don't want to pay 
I'm privileged, I'm prideful. Where is all that coming from? When was the last time you looked in the mirror and really truly inspected who you are? Are you clean? Are you washed with the blood? Are you honoring God? Is there spiritual compromise in your life? Are you lying to yourself? Are you lying to your friends, your bosses, your co-workers? Are you lying to your family? Are you dealing with baggage you have ne not ever let go of? Some of us are. I do. At least I see it. Some of us are completely blind to our sin. Because it feels so good that you can't see. You actually will start making compromises in your mind. Let me explain a story. Right now, there's a movie called Ordinary Men on Netflix. We're about to go through this again. It tracked the Nuremberg trials. Fresh out of college attorney, international bar carded attorney, was the one who started the prosecutions with The Hague. 27 years old. Short little man. He had more balls than any man that I have ever met in my life. Hope that doesn't offend you. This guy took on, was able to bring down a bunch of ordinary men, if you will. These are men that uh, applied to be a part of the German hierarchy. They were firemen, police officers, they were plumbers, just guys. They went into training for six months. It's 1940. To become a part of a special police force under, directly under the government. And they go into the wilderness one day after getting, after graduating and getting their uniforms and getting their guns. They were walking into the wilderness one day, and uh, their, their sergeant comes up and says, I have a horrific order I must give you. He says, today, you will kill 1,500 men, women, and children, Jews. But then he says, any of you that don't wish to be a part of this, you may step out now. And he gave a good amount of time. And after about a minute, the first guy steps out. And once it was okay for that guy to step out, 14 more people stepped out. You know what? They were ridiculed. Some of them almost got to a point where it, they were in fear of the way the other soldiers were treating them. But the... The company commander said, stop. You will not hold these guys out of honor. You will hold them up. You will not behave this way towards them. Fifteen guys got out because it was dishonorable. The rest stayed because of pride. Ordinary men. Regular guys. And they went in to the forest, and over the period of that day, those guys killed 1,500 men, women, and children. Now imagine going back that first night, how solace it would be, how miserable it would be. After a few weeks, they started having to do this every day. Ordinary men, killing machines. Because they got an order. These are guys who were wealthy businessmen in the economy of Germany. These guys were successful plumbers. You would let them in your house. And they would literally form groups 
and there was a couple different types of groups. But one of the ones, the group that amazed me was the group that would talk about the way that they would kill when they got done with the job and they would laugh about it and drink. And I remember hearing a story of how one guy, so he would save on his bullets, he would have the mother hold the baby over her chest and he would shoot the baby in the head and kill the mother at the same time going through the heart. He thought that was the coolest thing. These guys literally at the Nuremberg trial thought they were innocent because they were obeying orders. They said they were held under the threat of duress and fear of their life, but that was not true. They were given an opportunity to get out. See, being not sinful is not cool. Being without sin is not cool. I beg to differ. I couldn't imagine that being compromised in that moment. Couldn't have imagined it. Even one innocent, I couldn't have dealt with myself. I would have put a gun to my own head, probably. The guilt would have been tremendous. That's what I think today, right? Then you ask yourself, what would you be under pressure in front of others? Me, I would stand out. I know I would. What about you? Are you going to stand out? Because the time is coming. Are you going to separate yourself from sin and renounce sin or are you going to renounce God and follow the orders given by the Reich it used to be a thought that we would never have to present ourselves in a situation like that right it used to be something that we could pretty much guarantee that that was not going to happen to us here in America oh how quick the tables have been turned. America has been literally flushed in three years. Longer than that. You know that. Completely brought under the subjection and the control of the alphabet soup agencies that are rogue, beyond rogue at this time. To the point to where they are going to glorify Satanism and hate and anybody that follows Jesus is a hater. Irony, the word of God says that. Irony. Irony, the word of God is truth. The word of God is being fulfilled today. And we're in the front row. It's irony. I just want you guys to know, we at His Advocates, we love you guys. And I don't want anything from you on these weekend shows, weekend prayer calls. I don't want anything from you. I want your prayers. And I want strong men and women to come from it. I want you to look in the mirror every day and ask, do I honor God today with my little things? Am I spiritually compromised today? Am I not dealing with a core issue in my life? I wish I could remember these thoughts every single day. Because it's when you get into the nitty gritty of where you're at with God. It's when the overwhelming blessing. And when I'm speaking blessings, we're not talking lavishness. We're not talking cars, homes, property, land. We're not talking those silly things. We're talking blessings where you feel the Lord's hand upon your life where you feel your fruit is abundant where you're never lacking where you're never questioning you just know he's walking with you 
Are you there? Are you overwhelmingly gifted with the blessings from your father? Is he talking to you all the time? Or do you feel like he's gone astray because of your sin? The good news is sin is something you could turn from and you can turn hardcore from it. The good news is the second you do, God can forgive you. The more you dwell in it, the longer the trial will be. When you come out of it, there may be punishment. But I'd rather take that punishment and be in a good standing with God than take the punishment and not. The punishment for sin is death. And I don't want to be there. And I want you guys that are holding on to the things of which cause you anxiety. The things of which cause your body to decay from the inside out. The autoimmune diseases that are emotionally based, emotionally charged, that no doctor can figure out, but always seem to point back to unforgiveness. What if we had just turned that corner and lived our life out for God? Today making that decision and just introspectively looking at who you are every day instead of looking in the mirror and saying do I look good today see yourself for who you really are and ask how does God see me today because you're going to get a wake up call when you ask that question you're going to get every sin that you are dealing with laid out right in front of you at that sink. But you can have a meeting of the minds with God and you can lay it all at his feet once and for all and ask him to help you. But spiritual compromise isn't just murder. It isn't being one of those ordinary men who pleaded for their life, who who sat at the Nuremberg trials and literally said we were ordered to do this. Literally said we were under the threat of duress of being killed. Literally said I did it for my country. Literally fought the propaganda, believed the propaganda so much that they lessened the life of others to the point where they were able to murder them. Propaganda. Well, in this nation, it is legal to do propaganda, meaning it's legal for the news media to lie. And you need to start realizing every single thing being delivered, not just by the news, but by social media, as some form or something behind it, there's motivating reasons why you're watching what you're watching today. No matter what you watch, remember that. There's motivating reasons why you're watching what you're watching. And we have to realize that and we have to watch over what we are watching because it causes us to think less of our father, to think less of our chances, to think less of the survival rate, to think less of the ability for God. God is on the throne. God created the whole universe. He created the devil, whatever you want to call that thing. He created the, the angels that fell. He created the people. He created the people that were here before the people were here. Don't want me to get started on that biblically. Listen, there isn't anything God does not have under his grasp. There isn't anything God cannot do with a single wave of a finger. There isn't anything God is not under control with. And if you're going through something, it's because God wants you to turn from whatever you're doing wrong and to look at him and rely upon him. 
And that's all the anxiety is about. That is all that is is the, the taps on your shoulder all day long is about. That's all the the autoimmune disease is about. It's your body telling what you're doing is wrong. It's reacting because your body is not supposed to live with sin in it. Have you ever seen what somebody looks like that's gone through a lot of sin? It's horrific. Have you ever seen what somebody looks like who was walking a holy walk, was living out a holy walk? It's very stark difference of purity and light. I told this story one time to you guys. I met Chuck Smith once. And he was a pastor over the Calvary Church. And after he died, the church split. Chuck, after the one sermon message I listened to him do, I listened to a few of them, but really this one was really dear to my heart. I walked out back and I looked at him. And he literally had a Shekinah glow. I've never seen it before or after on any man. But the guy was glowing. You could see the Holy Spirit around this dude. And you know what? He didn't have it right. He was a United States citizen. He was a 501c3 church. There are some parts of his message that he was afraid to deal with of the word of God. There's some parts of the what, how he taught that did not deal with the entirety of the word of God. Did he love the people? Oh my gosh, yes. Was he a man of God? Absolutely. When he died, thousands of surfers, surfers in Huntington Beach formed a circle and read the word and glorified and settled out his life. And you know what? A rainbow came over all those surfers at that moment. God loved that man who unknowingly had sin in his life, meaning he was pledged as the surety, meaning he was a part of the system, meaning he paid into a system that where the money was used for horrific glory for the devil. He was a part of it. Did he know? No, because it's a mystery. In those days when God is dealing with Revelations 18, 4, he says, come out of her, my people. Why? Because you're a party to the sin that's taking place in the world. It's like being a part of that movement, those ordinary men going across Europe, killing people in the tens of thousands, if not millions of people, two million people to be exact, that the soldiers, the police killed themselves. And they kept records. More in Auschwitz, more in the concentration camps. More because of war, more. I mean, there's a lot more than that that died. Not just Jews, Russians, Turks. A lot of people died during that, that time and season. Millions and millions. The suggestion is, even though Chuck had that in his life, it was his heart that was right on with God. It was his heart that God looked at and God dwelt with him so hardcore that the glory of God was all over him. Now, that's a guy who's introspectively looked at his life every single day in the mirror. That's a guy who's laid down the pride. That's a guy where thousands of pastors have spun off of pastors that are going around the world teaching on things that I agree and don't agree with. Who's Kelby, though? You know what I mean? My point is, is I am sure that God does not judge us for the small things. We got that in a grace card written up. Past, present, and future. Once you believe upon a finished work of the cross, you're done. You're done. But God's going to tap you on that unforgiveness, and he's going to show you in ways that your body's going to be affected, whether it's anxiety whether it's autoimmune diseases, whatever, God's going to deal with you until you let it go, and then your body will heal. 
because it's not right. It's not the design that God had for you because it keeps you from him, from his perfection. If you guys have any prayers, please post them in, in the chat area. JT, I need prayer for restoration of my family members. God knows. Father God, we just lay down JT's prayer request uh, for his family and, and my family. The restoration of our children. And, and, and Lord, we ask you for help. We ask you that you come before the needs that uh, we are at. We come before our requests that we are, are doing and that you honor them today, Lord. That you just, you see our needs, you see our prayer requests, and you see our heart. And Lord, that you you help JT in anything that he might be dealing with to help that restoration of his family to the Lord. In Jesus' name, that you just let his spouse and, and his children and, and whoever to see the new man, to see that and want to be a party of that. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you all things just... We don't necessarily understand why we're going through what we're going through, but Lord, just wash that whole home. Cleanse the home and cleanse the hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, David, I need prayer for anxiety, depression, and fear. I know God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but need to be set free in my mind. Thank you for lifting me up in prayer. Prayers for Valerie. Lord God, we just... Uh, we lay Valerie at your feet. And with the people that are listening to this right now, whether now or in the future, I just ask that you just agree with me. In Jesus' name, and Valerie, just be healed. And Lord, the root cause of wherever this anxiety is coming from, whether it's washing her mind with the fears of the world or washing her mind with the word of God or washing her mind with things that have happened to her in the past or things that she holds on to bitterness or anxiety or unforgiveness or that you heal Valerie today. You show her a way to let go of these root issues potentially that could be causing the anxiety. But Lord, that you bring forth a newness in her. You bring forth a spiritual healing today in Jesus name that she feels her chest literally get hot. And then she feels the hand of God over her heart and over her mind and that you're doing a cleansing of the root issues, Lord, that cause these things. And Lord, that you, you let her see you on the throne. You let her see the majestic nature of an all-powerful God who just wants to be with her as dad and wants to hold her and just love on her and show her that he is in control and with we win in the end, Lord. And that going through some of these seasons and times are just the way of life. But she can steer clear of some of the tragedies. She can steer clear of the plague. She can steer clear of some of the atrocities by operating outside and in your will. In Jesus' name, do a work on that home. Please pray for strength of our minds for the things that are before us and salvation for our family members who don't know Yeshua. Father God, um, I just come before you right now and uh, this person's prayer request is strength of the mind. In reading the word, Lord, it's always strengthened my heart and my mind and knowing the outcome and knowing because it produces faith. Lord, in dealing with problems or issues, James 1, 2, counting, counting it all a joy that we fall into trials because it produces faith. Lord, help us to understand that trials thrown at your feet, back at you, Father, quickly. Where, Lord, you are working out the trial causes us to have faith. Help this family realize and get strengthened by trusting you to their problems. 
that they take their trials on a daily basis and say, oh no, Lord, these are yours. Literally walking away from that trial, giving it to you and asking for help. And then letting you do a completed work in building their faith. For us to have faith, we have to trust in you in all that you do. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name, to produce at least enough faith to give you our issues so it builds more faith for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And Lord, just bring forth the word to his family. Bring forth somebody that is going to stand forth and just give that opportunity to come and know Jesus, the, the Son of the Most High God the offering for our sins and uh, that we can just upon that belief of his son know that we have all eternity with our father we thank you lord for that in jesus name amen father petitioning deliverance peace that surpasses understanding for our brother david right now. thank you as look in his mighty name of yeshua glory to your holy name Amen. I agree. So, 100%. I'd rather die than to ask God. God's word says, in 33 2, when thou pass into the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I love that. In Jesus' name. And of mine, he is an immigrant to this country, is all alone. So, still, thank you for that. Prayer. You send healing to her, Lord Jesus. I just pray for Harold's friend, the mother suffered a stroke, Lord, that you alleviate some of that issue upon her heart, upon the brain, upon the blood vessel that is causing the ailment. In Jesus' name, Lord. You just come upon this friend and just heal her. And Lord, that she learns how to help herself and re-helping her blood. In Jesus' name. A prayer for a brand new brother in Christ who is having serious health issues. I think that's going to be the common one, JT. Everybody's going to be going through some health issues in the next few years, Lord. In Jesus, we just Pray for complete healing of swelling of the stomach and his feet, Lord. In Jesus' name, whoever this brother is, they just come upon you. Put your hands upon his life, Lord. And you just do a change agent on his health and what he eats and how he deals with his health and whatever the, the root cause is in Jesus' name. And the uh, healing of all those who desire for their son to return from his trip to New Orleans and speak Lord Jesus. We just ask that you cover Rhonda's son as uh, he returns from being out of state, that you just protect him, protect his mind more, protect his physical well-being, and make sure he gets home safe. Um, in Jesus' name, we just also cover the family and, uh, and friends and the community uh, all around this family to awaken them in the truth of God. In Jesus' name, we ask that you just bring forth the healing and you show miracles and, and that whole community has a revival. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sue. We pray for you. We have a predictable hope. It's just possible. We normally don't do this. Um, Anthony, if you talk. Anthony, I open the mic. You have to do something when you're at John for yourself and speak. You there, Anthony? Everybody listen. Mm -hmm. Prayer, um, just chime in. I'm going to leave your mic unmuted. Just have to figure out how to unmute yourself. And uh, just chime in when you're ready. Um, Prayer for a young man with addiction problems, sharing the gospel with him, open. He's open to the truth. In Jesus' name, I agree with JT. Um, 
Addiction is a hard thing, guys, but it's real. Lord, just cover this young man and just help him be released and not be afraid of walking free of that sin. In Jesus' name, Lord, rest his soul and heart here. Lord, thank you, Sulu. Blessings. Good hey, guys. Love you, man. Um, I'm going to ask that uh, you just bear with me for another minute while we pray and close and um, just agree. And uh, and remember that us praying together and agreeing together is very powerful. Father God, we come before you, and there's so many people that have prayer requests, prayer needs, and things that people are dealing with. Super happy to see Anthony back on, and Lord, I just ask that you cover him with whatever he's going through and dealing with this decision to, to get right. And Lord, I know uh, the ailment, I know is uh, is is his desire and he's a good man lord help him to see that he's a good man and help him to realize that you love him lord and that you want to free him and that everybody is agreeing upon right now that anthony is becoming free and anthony is becoming righteous before you father and wants to walk in your statutes and your will in jesus name we pray guys we love you man um I'm the only one in my family. And he says, I'm the only one in my family that changed my status. I've been praying for God to help me build uh, or buy a business so I can get out of my job and help my family with what they need. I've been dealing with dyslexia and it's hard to focus. I have a hard time completing the task. I get it, Eddie. As we get older, things get weird. Father God, I just ask that you give Eddie the desires of his heart to help his family and his business and that you just open up his mind more than anything as to what you can do through him and that you just love him and that you show him the way and that you show him what you want him to do so that he doesn't have to work for another anymore and he doesn't have to pay taxes to the to the devil anymore but that lord he is able to utilize these structures that are private under god to be free in jesus name we pray peace I love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Please share this message with your family and friends and uh, let us know what we can pray for you guys for. Reach out to us on hisadvocates.org. And if you have any issues, any prayer requests, we're always here for you guys. You know that. So God bless you guys. I hope you have a great day. Thanks.